quick craft today, something pretty simple, but one of my sweet followers suggested that I use my bison picture that I posted a few days ago um, for a craft. So I'm going to do that today and see what how it turns out. Um, it's going to be a very just primitive, rustic craft, but I thought it would be a fun decoupage project and something really quick and easy to do. So this is just a scrap wood block that I had my husband cut me some pieces like this off of an old board we had outside. It's nice and weathered and sun bleached and all that good stuff. So I just kind of sanded it down a little to smooth it out. And then I printed this image on rice paper. Um, and I'm going to Mod Podge it onto my board. If you're interested in this image, I did put it in my Etsy shop as a download. Um, today I'm gonna to be using the color version, but I also um, included a black and white version. So if you like to use stuff like this in your crafting, um, or it is a high quality photo, so you could even use it as a print, like a large print for your home decor, if you like this kind of stuff. Um, but either way, if you're interested, it's in my Etsy shop and I'll drop a link for that. So to get started, what I wanna do is just kind of prep my board a little bit. I am gonna use it like landscape. I have my picture printed out landscape, so I'm gonna do it to the side. It kind of has this crazy looking top, so I'm gonna put this to the top so that it stands up. And then I decided to use this side. It's kind of the smoother side. This side has a bit of a crack, which is fine. I don't mind, but I'm gonna use this side today. So the first thing that I'm going to do let me just get myself set up over here so I can see everybody's chats and stuff. Uh, let's see, I made myself too big. <laughs> okay, so if you are watching, be sure to say hi, let me know where you're watching from, and if you're catching the replay, um, let me know, say hashtag replay, let me know so that I know that you are here, um, and I would love to chat with you. All right, so to get started, I'm going to be dry brushing on a little bit of chalk paint. This is Truffle by Waverly. Um, I'm just going to do this to kind of give it a little bit of interest. It already has a lot of color, but I just want to add a little bit more. So I'm going to be adding just kind of some base layers here. And then um, I think I'm going to try to do a little bit of crackle underneath the printable and see how that turns out. So, so, let's go ahead and get some paint on my brush. Kind of dab it on, dab it off. And then I just want to lightly brush across. I'm not looking for full coverage here. I just want to add some interest because I, I just feel like this piece of wood is beautiful. So, I'm going to add that on. Maybe hit those edges a little bit to darken them, give it a nice silhouette. I'll probably redo that once I get my picture um, Mod Podged on too. I hope you all had a great Easter. I really, I had, we had family out of town visiting, so I just took the opportunity to kind of take a break from social media, um, spend just some downtime with family, um, and it was kind of nice. So I kind of, I miss you guys and sharing with y'all chatting with y'all, but it was nice to just disconnect for, for a little bit and kind of rest and revamp and get some new fresh ideas. All right, so for my next color, I'm gonna draw this, but I'm gonna use this mineral chalk paint to give it that gray look. Let's give this a quick dry though. Let me know what did you do for Easter? Did you travel? Did you stay in? Did you do a big family thing? Or was it just kind of quiet? How did you celebrate this year if you celebrate Easter? It's looking really nice already. All right, I think that's dry enough to go to the next step. So I'm gonna do my mineral now, just to give it a little gray. Really liking how it's looking already. It's 
exciting. So I'm gonna get a little bit of this on my brush, dab a little back off, and just kind of randomly brush it on. You can go in different directions if you want. I really like that, that looks neat. And this does dry a lot lighter than when you first put it on. So don't be afraid to go a little heavy if you are using the mineral color. And you're not going to see this a lot because I am going to cover it up with the printable, but I just like to be thorough and put a good base on things just because you never know what's going to peek through. And I am going to add some plaster on top with a crackle effect. And so I would like some interest kind of underneath those crackles if possible. So... chalk paint draws pretty fast. That's one reason I love working with chalk paint. All right, so here's what I have so far. And I don't know if you remember what it looked like before. Well, here's the back side. And so here's the front side. It just kind of gave it a little bit of extra pizzazz there. <laughs> I want to call it that. All right, let me get, well, we can do that in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and do the plaster. Um, chalk paint for some crackle. And instead of using Elmer's glue this time, I'm just gonna use my Mod Podge and see kind of how it turns out. So I'm just gonna brush on a generous amount of this. get it all covered all the way up to the edges in some of those little creases that's what these sponges kind of help you can pat and it like squishes some out that it's absorbed so it's good for getting down into little cracks so if you are mod podging on something that has a lot of like down impressions and stuff then the sponges are good for that to really get it down into those cracks and then before it dries Let's go ahead and put on a good coat of this plaster paint. My brush is kind of big, so I'm going to pull some up to the front, but we're just going to brush that across. And you know, it really doesn't have to be that thick either because I do want it to show through. I kind of already put that on a little bit thick, but we're just going to see what happens. I'm going to brush it a little thinner. Maybe not go all the way to the edges in some of these spots. Just kind of get some on there and wipe it back off. All right. So now let's give this a dry and see if we get any of that crackle effect. And I did decide to use the plaster because the wood is dark, my image is dark, and I really want to make sure that it pops whenever I um, Mod Podge it on. I want you to be able to see it. Hopefully this crackles really nice. If not, we'll give it a little bit of a, a chippy look too. Maybe I can scrape some of it off. We'll just see how it turns out. What's your favorite way to do the crackle, um, the crackle effect? What do you like to use? Do you use like Elmer's glue or have you tried the crackle paste yet? Um, I've seen it out. I haven't gotten any yet. I need to get my hands on some and try it out, I guess. Um, but the glue is just kind of a easy way it's 
crackling pretty nice in these lines. Go back just a little bit where you can see. You want to be careful not to get your gun too close. It will kind of bubble up that glue underneath. a little more as it dries some more but for time's sake I'm just going to go ahead and stop the drying process I'll let it dry a little bit more while I'm working on my printable but here's what I have so far you can see it's kind of cracked in the creases there maybe not quite as much as I want so I'm gonna let it dry a little bit more and then I'm going to use my scraper and my sander to kind of, sorry, I don't know. I was getting some kind of weird phone call. And I had it on do not disturb. That was weird. Anyway, sorry. Um, I like that this has nice straight edges. It makes it really easy to just use my ruler here. And I want to take off a little bit of the edges, kind of score it to see where it's going to fall. Because I don't want it to just, a lot of times when I decoupage, I want it to hang over the edge. But for this particular one, I think that I want you to see where the edges end. And I'm going to try to distress that a little bit. I think I've covered up a lot of my wood, like I said I wasn't going to do. But we'll see. So I'm just going to tear that so that it has a nice feathered kind of rough edge. As opposed to straight you can also like use um, water a water brush here if you want but it's pretty easy to do this with the ruler turn off some of those extra pieces And I did, I, don't, I think I said this, but I did print this on rice paper. I just um, temporarily glued it onto a piece of cardstock with some, I like to use the um, basting spray. It's a temporary kind of for quilting and stuff, but you can also, um, I've seen people just use a regular like glue stick because it's not that permanent. Okay, easy, easy there. So now I have my print and I really just love this print. If you didn't see when I posted it, um, I went over to the Tallgrass Prairie Preserve um, about an hour away from my house and the bison were up by the road. Uh, you can just drive through and sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not, but they have just a huge herd of bison and all the spring calves were out. It was really cute. And this was a picture, probably one of the favorite my favorite pictures I got that day. So it's nice to kind of use stuff like this as like just memories and put around your house. So if you have any fun vacation photos or kind of things like that, then you can do something like this and set it up. And every time you look at it, then you'll remember. Okay, let's see. Let me get my, we'll try my paint scraper first. And just, stretch that sometimes things don't turn out quite like you expected in your head maybe I should have used the even lighter coat of it but that's okay because you just kind of got to roll with it sometimes sometimes you learn for the next time what you want to do different Sometimes you end up with something that you didn't expect that was even better. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> but I'm just kind of scraping that up a little bit. Those edges. Like 
like I said, most of this is going to be covered up anyways. I'm just kind of playing with it. <laughs> thin it out a little bit. Mostly I just wanted to have a bit of a white background so that my image is going to show through, stand out kind of. And then we'll kind of blend it in after we get it on. Okay, I have a mess here. <laughs> That's okay. I have this silicone mat that I work on, um, and so it's really easy just to pull up, shake off, wash out, whatever. It's pretty sturdy. Okay. So, here's what I have now. So, kind of a chippy slash cracky kind of little finish. I don't know what you would call it, but that's what we ended up with. So, now I'm going to Mod Podge my picture on. So let's go ahead. I'm going to coat the whole thing with Mod Podge because after I put my picture on, I'm also going to go and um, de-stress maybe with some ink or some paint around the edges. And it just, the glue, um, once it's dry, it just helps that slide around a little bit better whenever you're blending. Looks like I've got a clog here. It's the only bad thing about these bottles. Sometimes it does get a bit of a glue clog. Let's take it off. If I can get it off. I see it. Let me see if I can pull it out. Now everything's sticking to my fingers. All right, I think I got it. There we go. All right, so let's use my sponge again and just spread that across. If you wanted more of your background to show through, like on your base, then you could always um, just kind of keep your white paint to the parts that's going to be underneath your image and not go so far out. Kind of make sure I get my drips over the edge because I don't want it to be thick glue over that edge. It dries clear, but you can kind of see whenever it's clumpy and thick. All right, so there's that. Now I'm just going to kind of eyeball my piece here, center it up a little bit. And press it on. This rice paper is a little bit forgiving. You can kind of move it around if you grab it before it dries. I didn't get that quite in the center. It's a lot more forgiving than say like working with napkins for sure. All right. And then you can just use a little, let's see, I like these little silver brushes that I get from Dollar Tree. Um, they're really stiff bristled and you can just kind of tap your image down, your paper down, your napkin or whatever, and it really gets it into the grooves of your base. So the wood, you, I can see that the wood grain is showing through behind the image. It's like getting into all the cracks and stuff. I 
really the trick to decoupage. You're trying to make it blend in as much as you can to your base or your background. So whenever you can really pull out the texture of your piece through the paper that's overlaid, that helps a lot. And my printer did print this out pretty dark. It's kind of hard to see his face. Um, it really just depends on your printer, how it's going to do but I think it's still gonna be fine. So here's what I have so far. I'm gonna let that dry. And then we'll on the edges. <clears throat> uh, hi, Becca. I'm sorry if I'm just now seeing your comment. I don't know if it was delayed or if I just missed it, but Nice to see you too. Thanks for joining me. sander here and I'm just going to go around these edges and just dress them a little bit, sand them, um, and just try to kind of blend them in just so that it's not such a blunt edge. I don't want to lose too much of my photo so I'm not going too far but just right on the edges there just to give them more of like a little bit of a feathered look. kind of pick some pieces if you want it to look really rough. Go against where that ridge of the wood is, is showing through and make some little scuffs right there. Really just kind of pick up the natural shape of any dips or divots or cracks that you might have in your base. scratches like it's an old photo. All right, and so you can see it's already starting to blend in just a little bit better, knocking off those edges and making a few of the little distressing scratches. So, BZ247 says, hi, this is beautiful. Thank you. I hope it turns out really cute. I think it's going to be a very pretty piece, I hope. So let's see. Now let's go ahead and put some more Mod Podge on top before we distress again, just to protect my picture. And that way it won't just sink right into that paper. It's going to kind of glide across the top of it instead. All right. I really love working with Mod Podge and pictures and images. Um, I just enjoy the process and I think it's pretty neat how it turns out. I'm not really a painter, so if you're not a painter, then you can kind of relate that it gives you a way to really work with a very, like a pretty image. Um, that you probably wouldn't have had otherwise because I, I can't paint this buffalo. <laughs> but I can use a picture. That's a lot faster too. Okay, 
Okay. So let's go ahead and give that a quick dry. I saw that your comment got retracted. I'm not sure what happened. I, I didn't do it. <laughs> Thanks for calling me again, though, and letting me know. I always wonder, like, when weird stuff happens, like, oh, did I do something? mostly dry now so I am going to use some ink now I think I'm going to use some of this walnut stain for a lighter brown and then some of this ground espresso for a darker brown let's see what we can come up with here okay Gonna use the whoop, I do that every time. Gonna use the lighter brown first. And this is just a blending brush. I get questions about this a lot. It has really soft bristles, kind of like a soft bristle toothbrush. Um, I've seen some people say you can get them at Dollar Tree. I have never seen any at mine. I got these at Hobby Lobby. And um, I also have them linked in my Amazon shop. If you're just looking for a quick grab and order, you can get that there. So I'm just using it to go over the edges. I really didn't want, want a lot of white to show. I mainly did that so that my picture would show up really well. So I'm gonna be covering that with some of this brown to darken that up. Becca says that is going to be lovely. Love the buffalo. I know, I really love them too. And it's so neat to drive through the park, especially when they just come up right up to your vehicle. It's it's really neat. It's just really a blessing to be able to get up close with these big animals. I'm really focusing on those edges um, that I feathered in. How do I print this out and what did you use? So um, I don't know if you were on here when I said, but I do have my picture. I uploaded it to my Etsy shop as a print, as a color or a black and white. So you can download that as a digital download and then I used um, either you can use like some temporary basting glue spray or just some regular a glue stick and some rice paper. And I just glued the edges onto a piece of cardstock um, and ran it right through my printer. Just a regular printer, um, just a regular inkjet printer and um, printed that out on some rice paper. You can also do it on just plain computer paper if you don't have any rice paper. The only difference is just it won't be quite as thin, but you can kind of use your sander, you know, to, well, you don't want to sand off a lot of the color, I guess. If there was a lot of white, you could use your sander to get rid of some of that extra paper, but I have used regular paper on projects before too, and it worked fine. So, just however you prefer to do it. I'm going to kind of go over lightly some of those places that I rubbed for distressing. Tone the white down just a little bit. Give it kind of a brown tint. I don't know how that got scratched right there, but it's not a big deal. We'll try to camouflage it a little bit. Okay, so already that's taken away a good bit of that white. Kind of got some glue on the edge there. 
So here's just the lighter brown, and it's really just kind of weathering that, making it look a little bit older. I'm gonna make sure that it's good and dry before I add the next color, though. Another thing to note, if you are using the rice paper, and I do have that linked in my Amazon shop too if you wanna see the exact um, brand that I bought, make sure that you print on the rough side, not the smooth side. I glue the smooth side down to my um, cardstock and then print on the rough side that's on the top. All right, that's good enough. I just wanna make sure that it's it's dry so that it doesn't blend in with my other color. So now I'm gonna use my darker color. I'm just, I really like um, a lot of people, well, you may think some people are like, that's a little bit too much. Why do you do so much, so many steps? It's too much work. But I just like the look of the different layers. I think it just gives it interest and it's just very visually, um, I like that. So you don't have to do so many layers but I like, I just like working in layers. It kind of like brings your piece out so it's not so flat. Some people like nice, pretty, crisp, clean lines and, and work, but I kind of like all the, the layers and the interest of it. And I'm really not gonna do a lot of embellishing to this. I kind of thought about maybe some things I could do, but really it's just a very primitive piece, a very rustic kind of attention piece. Like I said before, you can use it just for a memory of a cool thing that you saw or had on vacation or even like a special moment maybe from a, a wedding or some kind of something like that. And it stands, you know, stands up by itself. So you can just kind of put it on the counter or in a corner somewhere. And when you look at it, you'll remember the day. I have several pieces like that in my house, especially of my photography, just prints on the wall. Um, just things that I like to remember um, a nice time that we had as a family or something like that. Okay, so really that's all I would like to, I may come back with some paint later. I don't know why that scuffed up like that. Or darken it down a little. I don't know. Anyways, I really like it though. I love how it looks. Very rustic. Toned down that white with that ink. So it's just a good piece. And every time I see this, I'll be reminded of the day that I went here with my daughter and we had fun taking pictures and stuff. So I hope you like this craft. It's super easy. If you have any more questions, pop them in the comments. Um, I love talking crafting, so I don't mind helping you with anything. If you want this print, go grab it in my Etsy shop. Um, and you can use any base. Like I said before, this is just like a old piece of wood that I had my husband cut in some smaller pieces, but you can use a palette or like a box, kind of shadow box um, piece or something like that. Just use your imagination. So, and if you make this or something similar, I would love to see it. So um, you can share that with me too. But thanks for hanging out with me today, you guys. And I just hope that you have a great rest of your day. Bye, see you later.